Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at how we would find the intersection of two vector lines. So we can answer questions from exercise 9e. So let's just consider what happens in three dimensions because it's quite easy in two dimensions really. You've either got two parallel lines or you've got two um, lines that are going to intersect. But in three dimensions you've got three possible options. You've either got parallel lines you've got lines that will intersect and lines that neither do either of those two and what, they, what we call those we call them skew lines so just imagine two roads where one passes over the other so you've got one road that's going that way one road that effectively goes underneath it and it will sort of loop around it and carry on going that way but you, you obviously know that, that would be a straight line there it's just a bit difficult to draw um, so we have three options we have skew lines that effectively if you imagine two aeroplanes flying up in the air um, from the ground it can seem like those two aeroplanes have um, intersected um, but really it's just the case that one aeroplane has gone above the other aeroplane skew lines we have intersecting lines and we still have parallel lines so you, the way, the quick way of telling if a line is parallel is that if it has the same direction vector or a scalar multiple of the same direction vector. Okay, so let's have a look at this question here. Then we have two equations of lines and we need to show that the lines intersect and we need to find the point at which they intersect as well. So what we're going to do then is we're going to create two simultaneous equations out of the x variable and the y variable. So if we look at the top row here, we've got 3 plus 1 lambda, so that's this part here, and if the two equations are intersecting, then the x components must match up with each other at some point. So this is going to equal f minus 5 lambda. Effectively, what we're doing here is setting the whole of this vector equal to the whole of this vector and finding out the values of lambda and mu at which this point happens. But we do it in terms of simultaneous equations. The second equation obviously comes from the y variable, so that would be 1 minus 2 lambda equals 2 plus mu. And now given that we've only got two letters, we don't really need to deal with the z-axis. So what we'll do then is we'll just rearrange the first two to get lambda equals 2 and mu equal to minus 1. So when lambda is 2, mu is equal to minus 1, we know that the x and the y variables are matching up with each other. What we need to now go and have a look at is whether the z variable is going to match up as well. If the z variable does match up as well and we get the same on the left hand side as we do on the right hand side, then we get um, an intersecting point. If they don't match up, then it means, well, the x and the y variable have lined up exactly, but that on the z variable, um, it's not um, equaling it, so it's going to be skew. So, into the third equation we go, substitute it in, and we get minus 1, minus 1 um, on both sides. So, great, we are going to have two intersecting planes here, specifically at the value when lambda equals 2 and mu equals minus 1. So, how do we find the point of intersection? Well, let's just substitute in lambda equals 2 into the equation of the line, and we get 5 minus 3 minus 1. And you should get the same answer as well if you were to plug in lambda equals minus 1 into the second equation as well, mu equals minus 1 into the second equation as well. Um, okay, so that is our point of intersection then. So effectively what we have did here is we set one equation of a line equal to another equation of the line, set your x components equal to each other, simultaneous equation, y components equal to each other, simultaneous equation, check the z component now, and if those two are the same, then it does intersect. Let's have a look at a question now where we need to prove that these two lines um, are skew of each other. Now, the first thing I would do here is to just check that we don't have any parallel lines going on. So how do we tell the direction vector? Well, that's the vectors that appear on the bottom. I'll put an over 1 here, just so we don't get confused. Um, and it's probably a good idea if we convert the Cartesian equations that we've got here back into vector equations here, because they're a bit easier to work with. Notice here how we've got the conversion 
readily available to us here and that needs to be readily available in your brain rather than just on a nice PowerPoint for you. So um, this is the equation in vector form for L1, this is the equation in vector form for L2. They're not parallel because if you look at the direction vectors 4, 2, 1 and 5, 4, minus 2, there's not a scalar multiple to get from one to the other, so no parallel lines here. So they must either intersect or be skew of each other. So what we'll do then, so that, that's just comparing the um, parallelness of the vector. And they're not parallel. So let's create our simultaneous equations now. So from the x component, uh, from both equations, set those equal to each other. From the y component, set those equal to each other. And from the z component, we'll use this one later. Solve the first two simultaneous equations here and here, and you'll get answers of lambda equals minus 4.5 and mu equals minus 3. Substitute those values back into the z component, and hopefully we will get them equaling the same. No, they don't equal the same. When they don't equal the same, it means that they are skew. Okay, and we have proven that they are skew because when the x component and the y component line up with each other, the z component does not line up with each other from the two vectors. Okay, so we've found this this specific value of lambda and mu um, is going to be the situation where the x components and the y components match up. It's the solution to the x components equaling each other and the solution to the y components equaling each other. Just when we plug that answer into the z components, hopefully matching up with each other in which they'll intersect, it doesn't happen. So the z component does not have the same coordinates when the x coordinates line up and the y coordinates line up with each other. Okay, so that's how we answer a question to do with whether it's skew or not. We assume that it's going to intersect, start solving for the x and the y's, but then prove that it doesn't work for the z. Okay, your, two, your turn to have a go at one of each style question then. First one is an intersection, second one's a skew. Um, there you are. Start, uh, start having a go at these two. All right then, so hopefully you paused the video and had a go at these two questions here then. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by setting the um, line 1 equal to line 2. So minus 6 plus lambda. Um, then it's going to be 0 minus lambda on the j component. And then it's going to be 11 plus um, lambda on the k component. So I'm just making a column vector, a combined column vector out of the first line. For the second line, it's going to be 2 plus 2 mu. Uh, then it's going to be minus 2 plus mu. And then it's going to be 9 minus 3 mu. So what we'll do then is we'll solve a simultaneous equation for the x equaling each other and the y equaling each other. So minus 6 plus lambda uh, equals 2 plus 2 mu. And we also need minus lambda equals minus 2 plus mu to equal each other as well. So now we need to solve these simultaneous equations. So let's go ahead and I think in this case it will nicely cancel out if we add our equations together. So in this case here we're going to get minus 6 equals 3 mu. So mu is equal to minus 2. And then in this case here lambda is going to have to equal 4. Um, looking at the second of these two equations here we'll get minus 2. Minus 2 is minus 4 equals minus lambda, so lambda must equal 4. Okay, so those are our two lambda and mu values there. What we now need to check is um, the intersection point. Um, let's just check that the z component is going to match up. So plugging in lambda equals 4, we're going to get uh, 15. And plugging in lambda equals minus 2, we're going to get minus 3 times minus 2 is positive 6. 9 plus positive 6 is 15. Great. So we've got our z components lining up nice and equal to each other, so they definitely intersect. And you can always use that as a check as well to see if you've got the right lambda of mu and lambda. So your intersection point is going to be at 
the substitution of either lambda or mu into either of your equations. So let's substitute in 4 into the first one. We're going to get minus 2, minus 4, 15. And we can always just check that this is going to equal the same thing for the second equation as well. So if we substitute in minus 2, we're going to get minus 2, minus 4, and 15. So good. We didn't really need to do that second part, but I'm just showing you that it does work for both equations, and you should get the same answer for both equations. All right then, so question three now. Let's have a look at this one. Show that the lines are skew. So what we do to start with is we start off by assuming or, or going along the same type of maths that you would use um, to show that two lines are equal to each other. Um, just check that they're not parallel, so 2, 2, 3, 2, 1, minus 1. No, they're not parallel. One is not a scalar multiple of the other. So create your two vector equations, or two vector, um, yeah, vector equations, really. Um, and we've, I, I, I prefer doing it this way and combining them into one vector um, rather than having them as two separate vectors. It just makes it much easier to then write out the formulas that I'm going to need uh, for my simultaneous equations. So the first one comes from the x component. The second one's going to come from the y component. 1 plus 2 lambda uh, equals 4 plus mu. So what I think would be easier to do in these simultaneous equations here is if we subtract one equation from another, the two lambdas will cancel out. So we'll get 2 equals 1 plus mu. So mu in this case here must equal 1. And going through one of these equations, let's use the second one here, probably easier. We're going to get 5 on the right-hand side. Take away 1, that's 4 now. So lambda needs to equal 2. Okay. So now what we need to do is we now need to check the z components for both of these equations here. So substituting in lambda equals 2, we get minus 2 plus 3 lots of 2, which will give us 4. And for the, um, for the other component here, minus uh, 1 is going to equal minus 1, and these two do not equal each other. So the z component... Um, does not equal the z component when the two x and y components do match up with each other. If I was to substitute in, let me just show you what this would do. If I substitute in lambda equals 2 into the whole thing, then I'm going to get 4, 7, I'm going to get 5 here, and I'm going to get uh, 4 here. And if I then substitute in uh, mu equals 1 into this one here, I'm going to get 7, 5, minus 1. So you see here that the x components are equal, the y components are equal, but the z components are not going to be equal to each other. So that means that at the x, y coordinate of 7, 5, the z component on line 1 is going to be 4, and the z component on line 2 is going to be minus 1. So effectively one line is travelling over the other line. OK, so that's how we answer these types of questions here then. Have a go at a few of the questions from exercise 9e, see if there are any of this type. Um, but there is a second video coming up for exercise 9e. Thanks very much for watching.